Well, God bless each one of you. Good morning to you. And thank you for welcoming this strange face in your pulpit this morning. I appreciate that. My name is Doug Gregan. I'm here with my wife, Caroline. And uh, we are uh, prison missionaries. We serve uh, as missionaries to the correctional facilities of uh, the state, uh, primarily Essex County here. I've been serving uh, up until just uh, a week ago. I've been serving as the Protestant chaplain for the past six years in uh, two jails. And uh, we've been serving as missionaries, supporting men coming out of correctional facilities for the past 12 years. And this body of believers has done a beautiful thing in supporting us in countless ways. And we're so grateful to have a relationship with you. So know that we stand here and we sit here today with, with grateful hearts. You're a body who has stepped up and embraced the call to support and, and answer the word of God. Go, answer the word of God. It says, I was in prison and you came to me. And whether or not you cross that threshold is irrelevant. The point is that your heart is fixed there. You're in agreement. We're going to be talking about agreement today. You're in agreement with the will of God. You're in agreement with the call of Christ and so whether you're tangibly partaking of that or you're spiritually partaking of that, you're engaged in that, and I thank God for that. Um, so there's been a lot of change in our lives. We're, we're at a pretty interesting season, just like Pastor Jim has found himself in a fairly interesting season, I would say. Amen? And so we just are, are in agreement with uh, the Word of God, trusting for healing to find Him and, and flow through him that he be raised and that he be quickened by the power of God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead quickens his mortal body. That's what the word of God says. And so we trust that that will take place speedily. Um, and uh, we're so grateful for, I'm grateful to Jim as he's um, always been uh, very purposeful in his engagement with me. Um, and I think you probably as a pastor, you recognize that, that Jim has a shepherd's Heart. Pastor Jim has a shepherd's heart. He's very intentional when he ministers to you. Um, whether he's just shaking your hand and telling you that he's, you know, giving you a word of encouragement, but behind that is, in, is intention. And I, I think that's what the, the kingdom of God and what ministry is built upon. It's built upon intention. We're, we're called to see things that are not there. Right? We're called to see through the eyes of Christ. Paul says, we no longer see men or regard men according to the flesh. But if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So uh, I see that and I, I receive from that in Pastor Jim's ministry, and I'm grateful for that. This morning, <coughs> we're going to be, um, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord to lead us in the Word. If you have your Bibles, um, I would ask you to get that. I'm going to pray as well because I desperately need the Lord this morning. There are ministers in this congregation today who are far more learned, far more educated, um, very mature in the Lord, and so I'm very humbled to just have an opportunity to share what's on my heart today with you. And um, I invite you to join me in the Word. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 specifically. Chapter 4, we're going to be reading from 1 to 16. And so I would ask you to turn there as we pray. In, uh, in jail, no overhead projectors and no fancy TVs and stuff like that. So you have to know your word, amen? So I pray and trust that you have the word of God with you today, that you know how to get around that word and that you're in the process and engaged well in hiding the word in your heart, amen? That's where it's got to be. The word of God has got to be in you. It has to be in you. And so I pray that that's uh, something you're engaged in on a regular basis, hiding the word in your heart. Heavenly Father, this morning we come. We come in agreement. We come thankful, Lord, for who you are, for this great salvation that the Word of God declares to us and, and brings to us, that um, you are God, that you have made us and formed us. You, we, we found ourselves in a frail condition, in a broken condition, a sinful condition, a fallen condition, and yet you saw our need. And even in your wisdom, the Word of God says that you subjected us to futility for a purpose. And it's, it's in this that we see Christ. It's in, it's in our own frailty that we see Jesus. We see our need for him. And this morning, as we're preparing to hear the word of God, we ask you to minister by your spirit to us and prepare the way for that. Just as we've sang, sung together this morning, prepare the way. 
Lord, make straight paths for our feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Let us follow uh, holiness and, and peace, pursue peace. Lord, we need that this morning. I ask you by your spirit, please, to help me to minister the word of God plainly and simply and clearly. And I ask for the Holy Spirit to quicken each one of us to receive that which we have need of today. There are needs in this room that the Word of God desires to minister to. I believe that, and I trust for that. So in Jesus' name, we simply yield. We simply come into agreement, Lord God. Have your way in this place. We've sang it this morning. Have your way in this place. We thank you, God. Lord, I thank you for your mercies that are new each morning. And I pray that those who need those mercies would receive them even now in this moment of prayer. That those who are striving today, those who are struggling today, those who are, who are straining and, 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 and in a place of tribulation, that they might know the mercies of God this morning. Father, help us. Help us to enter into this great salvation. Help us to work it out with fear and trembling. Oh, Lord, how we need you today. And so we bless you with an expectant heart thanking you for bringing us into unity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I'm going to read this passage to you. We're going to be reading from 1 to 16. And I, I, I basically, my goal is um, the, the title, if you want a title for a message, I'm not very good at these, although my wife did give a stamp of approval on my title today. Uh, last night she said, what's the title of your message? And she said, I approve that. So just know that it, it comes... <laughs> At least the title, I don't, she doesn't know anything else about it, but at least the title <laughs> comes with her stamp of approval. The title of the message is, There is a Measure. There is a Measure. There is a Measure. Let me grab my bottle of water here. Cause... Oh, thank you. Ephesians 4, 1 to 16. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, that you might walk worthy of the vocation with which you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one ho hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And unto every one of us, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same that also ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature or a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mark that verse, please, 13. That we no longer are children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness in which they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There is a measure. So my hope and my goal this morning is to share with you the beauty and the gift of this measure that is referenced in verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect or a mature man or woman, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that's my goal is to set this measure before us today and help us to realign our walk with God, to help us realign our walk with Christ. Because I believe it's that measure that releases, when, when we embrace the measure that God has given us, which is the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that something happens in us, that faith meets us at that place of agreement. We look at the measure of Christ and we see the beauty of Jesus. We're told in the scripture to, that as we behold him, we are changed from image to image and glory to glory. That is God's work in us as individuals and us corporately. 
We are to manifest the very glory of Christ, manifest the very glory of God in our midst, and our lives, the very lives that we're living today, whatever you're in the middle of today, God desires you to see Christ in that, to measure that, mark that, and believe for Christ to fulfill that which he he has made provision in himself, in that. And my, my passion maybe today uh, would be to call us to stop measuring by anything else. That it's the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that is the right measure to mark and to set our heart and our faith on, not upon other things. And so I, I pray that the Lord would give me uh, uh, grace and, and, and help in just kind of may, maybe laying this out before you today. So that's that's my introduction. The measure of Christ is the only mark capable of producing the divine life needed for our lives, both individually, within our families, and within the body, the context of this, what's taking place right now. We're marking and measuring ourselves against Christ. Christ is in our midst doing something based on who he is. All right? So, I'm going to just ask the Lord to help me walk you through this verse, uh, maybe a, somewhat verse by verse. We'll see how it goes and trust that, uh, I do trust and pray that, it, that this would, would minister something to you today. That, that maybe you've been looking and measuring your life and your circumstances by a wrong measure. Not understanding that God's desire is to mature you, to strengthen you, to build you and form Christ in you so that you can stand strong and mature and be a vessel that is sanctified unto honor, fit for the master's use. May you see yourself that way this morning. So, uh, it may seem a little strange, but we've just read 1 to 16, and, but the first thing I want to do is I want to direct you back Uh, just a few verses to verses 20 and 21, because the first thing I want to highlight here, now I'm not trying to break this thing down uh, theologically, Uh, I I, I want to try to lead us towards the the goal of seeing Christ well today, Um, and in 20 and 21, the first thing we we see is Paul is coming into chapter 4, not that the letter had chapters in it, we know that, but Paul is coming into, he's leading into his therefore that begins chapter 4, coming out of these words. In 20 and 21, if you'd look at it with me, please, out of chapter 3. So 3, 20 and 21. Now, listen to, listen to the, 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 the broadness of this, the expanse of this. What do you need today? All right, that's my first question is we're talking about Christ being without limit. He is, he is limitless in His capacity to minister to us, to call us, to lead us, to direct us, to, to compel us to move forward and press into places that we maybe haven't seen yet. I pray that for you today, that you be enlarged in Christ to maybe press into Him in a way that you haven't or con- haven't considered maybe for yourself or for your circumstance. And so Paul says this, Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. What a a mighty and and glorious statement, a declaration, this this wonderful stamp and this this beautiful vision that sets before us Uh, such a a large place that that I believe God desires us to enter into. We read in in 2 Corinthians, for example, uh, Paul saying, be enlarged. He says, oh, Corinthians, our our heart is enlarged towards you, and we call you also be enlarged. So here's what I, if if you would permit me just for a moment. You know what? The truth is everything may be great with you today. You may be just on a mountaintop, living on a mountaintop, you got no trouble, no, no trial, no struggles. But I would submit to, to you today that someone in this room, at least one of us, is struggling. Amen? We need, we, need, we need to be enlarged in who Christ is. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. So in that place, whatever that means for you today, the first thing that I want to set before you is the greatness of our salvation and the greatness of our Savior who's able to do that, who's able to meet that. And so as we consider who Christ is, who calls us to holiness and righteousness, as we consider this, may, may you 
May you see and, and, and hear the, the Lord this morning calling you into that place. What do you need? The Lord says, I'm, I'm prepared to give it to you. I'm, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. All right? So Christ is without limits. That's my first point. There's no boundary within him. Whatever you need, he's able to bring you there and beyond. That's the first thing I want to encourage you with. All right, so now we move to my second point, in, uh, which is starting in verse 1. Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation with which you were called. All right, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation with which you are called. Paul is making an inclusive statement. There's no one outside of this statement this morning. Every one of us, no matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, we are all included and called to walk in this calling. We have been actually called out. The word called here is a word that means called out and set apart for God's plan and purpose. Okay, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of this call to which you have been called. Now there's something beautiful here and that is that in our unworthiness, when we see our own frailty and our own weakness, the, one of the first things that we encounter is the, the unworthiness of ourselves. We need to be enlarged in Christ, but we look within and we say, there's nothing good here. right? I, what, how, how can I be worthy to be enlarged in the things of God? I look at my life, look at these, this trouble that I'm in, look at this, the trouble in my marriage or the trouble in, in, in this circumstance, and I feel so unworthy. But, but the, the Lord, your worthiness is not based on anything of yourself, it's all in Christ. You were called by God in Christ, and that was a work that God did on your behalf. You had nothing to do with that. That was the work that God is, is, uh, has done for you uh, in His Son, and we continually participate and enter into that day by day. We enter into something that was given to us freely in Christ. So that's incredibly important for us. And then we need to see the, 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 the call for stewardship there, you see? To walk worthy is to be a faithful steward. Your salvation was given to you to, to be perfected, to be fulfilled, to enter into this abundant place. All right? You're a steward of the manifold grace of God. You're a steward of that. And I believe that maybe today, maybe today we're seeing our vocation um, not in its fullness. I think one of the, one of the, one of the struggles we have as a, as a church is we're looking for Christ to just kind of settle us into a, into a decent place. We, we're, we're just looking for a decent place. And then we want to move on and be about our business. But we're, one of the things that I want you to understand as we talk about the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ is that, that we have fixed our eyes on Him. And He is preparing us for a place that, that unless we are prepared, we don't fit into. You don't fit into eternity the way you are right now. Right? In, our, in this earthly realm, we're constantly battling with things that don't fit. The Bible says that corruption cannot inherit incorruption. So the, the work of the Spirit of God is to prepare us for that place. And that's, that's what we're, we're called to do. All right. So it's in the one and it's in the many. And I want to encourage you this morning that that's common ground for every one of us. All right? you're, on, you're in a good place. So know that this calling came to you not because you deserved it, but because it's good for you, because it was God's privilege to give it to you, to call you into this, into a, a more intimate knowledge of who Christ is, a more intimate knowledge of this, the greatness of your salvation. Now, in verse 2, we find what this, what this call or what this journey is going to look like, all right? He says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Right? With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering and forbearing one another in love. One of the things I've had to learn the hard way is the reality that as I see Christ and I hear him call me, and he has called me, and he's called you, he's called each one of us. I know he's speaking to you today. He's speaking to every one of us. But as I behold him, one of, the things that I, one of the things that we wrestle with is this idea of, of being called up, 
And we are being called up, right? The scripture says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. But here's, here's one of the most important uh, mysteries about growing in Christ. And that is, to grow in Christ, in order for God to bring you up, He brings you down. You're actually on a downward journey as you enter into the kingdom of heaven. You're decreasing that He might increase. And to the direct proportion that we embrace that, that we understand and embrace that, is the degree that we grow, that we enter into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The, the Scripture tells us plainly that Christ was one who emptied Himself of all glory. He was God, but He emptied Himself of glory. And so here we have this, these words here, lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another. And whether that's your wife or your husband whether that's your children, as a father, as a mother, whether that's your brother or your sister, whether that's your co-worker, regardless of how, how, that, <laughs> how the Spirit of God calls you to that, how the Spirit of God invites you to meekness, long-suffering, uh, lowliness, and forbearance, all right? however, the, however the Holy Spirit finds you there, that's you decreasing. That's a downward journey. And very often what we hear... It, preached and what we hear uh, ministered is everything's going to be great and, and you're on, you know, you're, it's, it's all about you. It's, you're, you're on the increase, all right? Today's your day. It's, it's, but we need to understand something. I believe the scripture reveals the journey to maturity to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ in a, in a, in a mysterious way where we lose ourselves and find Christ. So Paul uses language like this in Galatians 2.20, right? He says, hey, look, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Him. I no longer live. And may, may that, even that verse, just begin to permeate your, your circumstances today. I'm crucified with Him. Yeah, but I'm in conflict with this individual. We don't get along, and, and they, they, they hurt me, and they were unjust towards me, and, and it was so unfair. Well, you're crucified with Christ. You're on a downward journey. You're called to lose your life so that you can find it. So, again, as we're, as we're looking at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, I want to encourage you and call us all that this is a, a, a journey, we must remember that it's a journey downward. Okay? The language of the Scripture bears that out. I'm going to try to move along and, and not get bogged down, but this is very important. It's very important because the next thing that the Scripture says is we have to come into agreement. The next thing that this passage tells us is that we have to be in, in agreement with the Spirit. So let me ask you, are you in agreement with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you in agreement with what He's doing? Again, I'm confronted, I'm confronted by this far more than, uh, than I wish I was. The challenge of being in agreement with God. It sounds, it sounds um, at least on a surface level, it's very simple. But remember... The passage today is to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is where I see the body of Christ very challenged. Because we have no problem being measured by one another. Well, at least I'm better than this guy. Or at least I'm better than she is. Right? At least I've, I've, I've grown based on that measure. Based on what I see, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. But the measurement isn't that. The measurement is the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And suddenly that calls you far beyond how we analyze things in the natural. So we have to be in agreement with this, all right? Ag agreement is, is the place of power for the work of the Spirit. As soon as you surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit, and we'll finish this verse as we see the unity that God is calling us to, but you need to understand something. Even though you may be, be uh, the, the Spirit of God might be working something that seemingly is impossible to you, even though right now you might be facing and working through something that, that in your own estimation, in your analysis, looks absolutely impossible to, do, to you, you need to know that as soon as you come into agreement, into unity with what the Spirit of God is doing and who He's calling you to mark, which is Christ, 
Suddenly the power of God is released into your situation and into your circumstance because you've simply trusted him. You've told him, Lord, I don't know how this is going to come to pass. I don't even know how to die to myself, but I know that you were crucified for me and I know that I was crucified in you and so I believe that you will make provision for me in this impossibility. Can you say amen to that today in your situation? And again, I, maybe... Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't try to be a feather ruffler, but, but here's, here's um, let me just testify, all right? My life is filled, my testimony is, is constant rebellion against the work of God. Now, there have been years where that rebellion was pretty darn ugly, and I'm not going to share all that with you today. But you need to know that God, by His Spirit, is constantly calling me to search my heart. And so maybe if you're a young person today, the Holy Spirit might want to say, I'm calling you to a place that you haven't considered yet. I want you to see Jesus in a way you haven't considered. Is it not possible? I'm talking young people, 12, 13, 14, 18, 20, 21. Is it not possible that you have not considered just where the Lord might want to take you today. And if you will consider that today, that something will happen, something will happen in your heart and in your life that will actually redirect the, the course of, that you're on. Is it not possible that if we mark Christ today, something, something eternal and transcendent could take place in our lives? Would it not do us well to, to, to stop focusing on this kind of nonsense, the emptiness of this, the emptiness of this world and what it brings to you? Would it not be wise of us today to consider the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ in light of this? Can you see how destructive this is in light of that measurement? This does not produce that, saints. It never will. It never can. A little meme is not Jesus, all right? A little meme is not the Holy Spirit. That's where so many of us are expressing our Christian faith by a, by a graphic. And that's where we live, and we pat ourselves on the back and say, what a wonderful spiritual life I have. Look at what I posted on my status today. God have mercy on us. But it's, the, it's Christ. We need to enlarge ourselves, get our eyes off of these things. This is the world, the spirit of the world. And so I, I, I'm sorry to, to, well, no, I'm not. I, I challenge you. Consider. Agreement is the place of power where God can do the impossible. God's work and His intention is for oneness and for unity. This is where God moves, and it's we will be intentional about this. God will move through us with absolutely uh, unlimited liberty and freedom. All right? So let's listen to it quickly. There's one body, one spirit, even as you were called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Now, I just want you to do something for me. Just indulge me for a moment. Turn to the left to the right. Shake the hand of the person next to you. Tell them God bless you and say, we are one. Amen? We are one. We are one. Hallelujah. We are one. We are endeavoring to be one. To be endeavoring is an active word. You can't be idle and endeavor. You can't sit back. You can't withdraw and endeavor to be one. Amen? You don't have the right or the privilege to isolate yourself and say, I'm not going to deal with those people. I'm not dealing with that guy today because he's just a pain in my neck. You don't have the right. We're endeavoring to be in unity, in, in, in agreement, because that's the place that the world needs us to be so the world can see Jesus well. The world is dying today, saints. Amen? It's perishing out there. It's desperate. And so they need to see that the beauty and the mystery of agreement. Here these people are, look at, they're just like us, they're in conflict with one another, but something is at work within them that is producing a, 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 a unity and an agreement that I, that I find absolutely compelling. We should be compelled. We should be, the world should be compelled by, by us, and we should be compelled by one another. 
Again, I, I, for some reason this morning, I have young people on my heart today. Consider the, the, the spectrum, right, the, from young to old. And may, may it be at work in this body. I believe it is. I see it. I see it at work in this body of believers. I thank God for that. I know it's on Pastor Jim's heart that we are endeavoring to be in agreement and unity one with another. Okay, we move on. All right. Now, here's where, as we're marking the, this measure of Christ, right, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the next thing we find in this, in the, in this very challenging and compelling uh, uh, call of God to be in, in unity and agreement with him, the very next thing we find is his supply. As I was meditating on this verse, here's how I've always considered this. Let's read it, to, let's read it together, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now here's... Here's basically how, I, I, re, I didn't realize this until just yesterday, but here's how I believe many of us perceive the grace of God. It's, it's, it's a, a, there's a need, all right, by grace are you saved through faith, it's the gift of God. There's a need, and God says, all right, well, according to this verse, I'll measure out just enough, I'll give you just enough to get you through, all right, just enough. Now, in other words, I'm just going to meet out it's, there's, there's a limit. The mindset and the language here, at least for me, this may not be for you, but is this idea that God's just going to give you just enough. And the Lord showed me yesterday, I believe, at least in my own heart, is that's the complete opposite. Where sin abounds, grace even more abounds. That the grace of God is overwhelming. Grace of, the grace of God is overflowing. The grace of God and its desire to minister to you according to the measure that you need. What measure of grace do you need today? The Lord says, I'm, it's, uh, here it is. Right? It's my good pleasure to give to you the kingdom today. I want, I want to reveal myself to you uh, without limit to the measure. All right? Unto each one of us is measured. So where sin abounds, grace even more abounds. And isn't that where we so desperately feel like, boy, it just feels like things are so limited right now. No, no, the Lord says, what do you need? Call on me in the day of trouble and I'll answer you. Show you great and mighty things that you know not. Hallelujah. So I pray for you in your trouble today. You know that the grace of God, the power of God, the power to perform the impossible is grace, right? Grace is that, that unmerited work that is an agent of power whereby God accomplishes the impossible in our lives. And so he's without limit. He's, he's, his desire is to give that to you generously, liberally, and, and upbraids not. May you receive that today. Grace, not about withholding, but about abundance. Uh, let, me, let me just read to you. Well, actually, I already quoted it to you. Romans 5.21, where sin abounds, 5.20, where sin abounds, grace even more abounds. All right, just remember that. So where, if you're feeling low today, if you're feeling like, you, you know, you're on the bottom end of, of, the, of the measuring stick, you need to know that the Holy Spirit says, I, 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 I declare the opposite to you, that I'm, it's, it's my generosity, my greatness that I desire to real, reveal to you. Now, in, in, the, in the subsequent verses here, verses 8, 9, and, and through 11, um, I'm going to ask you, if you would please, to turn to 1 Corinthians 15, because this is just a side note here, and, and what I see in this is... God, having removed every barrier, there's every hindrance, every barrier that stands in our way of apprehending the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ has been done away with in Jesus. Christ has brought us into victory. Okay? So in verse uh, 8, he says, Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. But now I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 15, 53 to 58. Because I believe that this is, in effect, uh, the complement, a complementary passage to the victory that's being declared in these verses, 8 through 11 of Ephesians 4. Listen to this wonderful language, and I pray that this finds you today in, in your place of need. It says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, 
And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So now listen to it. He says, Wherefore, he says, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? And he that descended is the same that ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And then he gave, hallelujah. This is our victory, even Christ. So again, I'm, my, my, my heart and my desire today is to confront your difficulty, your struggle, your challenge with the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ to the measure of the stature. That's my heart today, is to call you to a place of confrontation that says, let me see this situation again. Let me see my weakness again in light of who Christ is in me. Let me reevaluate my circumstance. Let me reset my compass. Let me reset my heart, my faith, and my passion. Let me look unto Christ and declare in the face of this difficulty His greatness. That's what I pray for you today. If you need it. And I submit that there are some who do, I trust. I know I do. I've had, it's been a a very challenging week. You don't want to hear my story today. Maybe if you want to have some coffee, we can sit down and I can break down what a fool I've been this past week. Amen. But I'm just telling you, this is, this is the real deal. Okay. I'm I'm not, I'm not trying to share something with you just for the sake of sharing it. I I, I pray that, that, that these words would stir you to see Christ well in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your battle, in the midst of your conflict. All right, now we come to verse 6. And I'll uh, strive to to wind down here, saints. Uh, I'm sorry, point point 6, not verse 6. Amen. Okay, 12 and 13 actually is my, is my, uh, my point here. So let me read 12 and 13 to you. Now, this is why he gives some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These frail vessels that God raises up to minister one to another, to minister to the body. That's who Pastor Jim is. That's who Pastor Jim has been, a pastor, a teacher. He's been someone who's been edifying you, building you up. Why? Because there's an end. There's a call. There's a purpose to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right, to be mature. And, and maybe it would be appropriate at this time to, to, again, just say, have you lost sight of maturity, of spiritual maturity in Christ? Or have you never even considered it? Are you just a churchgoer? I'm sorry to get in your business, but maybe you just come here and you, and you do your thing and you listen and you sing and then you get up and you walk out. I'm telling you that these words are compelling and calling us to another level. May you consider that today, that you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. You're His. You belong to Him. You were purchased with His blood. Amen. And so this great work is our high privilege. It's our high privilege to enter into this, to press into this. And so he says this, for the, this is why God gave these things, for the perfecting of the saints, that's all of us, for the work of ministry, that's not this pulpit, that's service. Ministry is nothing more than serving one another, all right? I don't care. Uh, This pulpit, I'm just telling you right now, it means absolutely, in the big picture, it means absolutely nothing. All I am, if I'm not a servant to you, or if Pastor Jim is not a servant to you, then we have missed the mark in terms of what maturity produces. Maturity produces.